Director, producer Vishajit Singh is an illustrator, writer, performance artist, diversity speaker, and creator of SickTunes.com. He got his spark for cartooning in the post-9-11 tragedy when Americans with turbaned and bearded countenance became targets of hate crimes. For the past few years, he has been traveling across the U.S. with his sick Captain America persona, a sick man equipped with his turban and beard, fighting against bigotry, intolerance, and perceptions of what an American should look like. The short film American Sick will receive its world premiere at the Oscar-qualifying Tribeca Film Festival, and the film was created in partnership with Singh as the producer and Los Angeles-based director, Ryan Westra. Now, director Ryan Westra has been fortunate to capture many very powerful and important stories. He's traveled rural Punjab, capturing undocumented stories of a Sikh genocide, documented the struggle of Native peoples against oil companies in Montana, and he followed the HIV-AIDS outreach work of an NGO in Mozambique, edited an HBO feature documentary on reproductive rights, and just and that's just to name a few. And he's had minor roles on Netflix and HBO series that deal with wrongful conviction and bringing cult leaders to justice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome film directors of American Sick, Vishajit Singh and Ryan Westra to the show. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Well, I am very excited to talk to you about this incredible film. And I want to start off with you, Vishajit, because when did the idea for the film actually come to you? I think it came uh, more from Ryan actually for this film. This is our second uh, collaboration. And the idea came in the year 2019, uh, Ryan approached me. We had done a previous project where we focused on my performance artwork. And Ryan um, got to know uh, my life story. He visited my home in New York City. And he's like, I wanna, I wanna tell your life story. And so I think that was the genesis of uh, our partnership for this film. Well, Ryan, what drew you to actually direct this project and really bring it to life? Yeah, so I got to work with Vishajit on that first film in 2014. He dressed up as Captain America. We hit the streets of New York. He interviewed people and in the streets of New York, asking them, what comes to mind when you see me? What religion do you think I practice? Where do you think I'm from? Um, and then when he changed out of his outfit, um, as soon as he went back into normal clothes after a full day of shooting beautiful interviews with happy faces, Immediately from across the street, someone calls him Osama. Um, and from that moment, uh, I felt like I wanted to work with Vishwajit more because I feel the work he does as Captain America is a fun, interesting, and compelling way to fight the lack of representation six have had in the U.S. He's literally taking the stereotype that's portrayed in the media of people with turbans and beards being seen as a villain and flipping it on its head, turning it into the superhero. And is flipping the stereotype that people with turbans and beards aren't from the US, flipping that on its head too. When Vishwajit is dressed up as sick Captain America, he's undeniably American. Um, so we did that first film together. We had a lot of fun making it together. Um, but then I hit him up a few years later saying, hey, why don't we make something a little bit more in depth that goes into your full life story. Um, so American Sick is 10 minutes and it covers 40 years of Vishwajit's life and the origin story of Sick Captain America. You know, I have been blessed with the opportunity to talk to people from all different religions and cultures and places from around the world. And when I get to know them, my whole idea and narrative and countenance changes because I'm seeing people who they really are and not how the media portrays them. And so for me, I'm enlightened. And just the other day I was on Twitter one evening and I was kind of just kind of thumbing through the feed. And all of a sudden somebody says, well, look at this two Muslims guarding the door of this New York city skyscraper. And so I looked at the photo and I went, went those aren't Muslims. Those are two sick gentlemen and so i tweeted back and i said those are sick and then i put period smh meaning shaking my head like 
You just judge by what you see. Well, the moment I posted that, within a few hours, I had all the, of these likes hitting this tweet and people agreeing with me like, don't judge somebody in the photo. You don't know who they really are. I knew they were a peaceful people. And, you know, even here in the city of Houston, we had a police officer and, you know, he, he was a sick and he was unfortunately killed in the line of duty. And the whole town rallied around him. And I thought that was the greatest thing that I've seen because that, you know, even his fellow officers knew who he was, knew what his background was and knew that he was in the utmost man of peace. And so for you, uh, Visaji, could you explain to all of my viewers, kind of give us a, a complete overlook of what it means to be uh, part of this religion? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a young religion, 500 years old, comes from the Indian subcontinent. And um, we've had a very sort of short history full of just a lot of persecution from different uh, powers to be in their own time. But fundamentally, this faith is really about equality. And so uh, the founder, Guru Nanak, um, was, this is, we're talking about 15th, 16th century. Uh, he comes and he's talking about how do we, um, how do we treat each other with respect and equally. And so he traveled far and wide, I mean, on foot. Um, uh, he went all over the Middle East to Indian subcontinent up and down. And his whole point was, you know, we have this creator energy uh, exists in every human being. And how do we how do we see that? Now, it's easier said than done. Um, you know, I'll say this about myself and many six as well. It's a beautiful philosophy, but to follow it is not easy because we are just uh, we're, we're tribal creatures as humans. And we love to see differences. We love to celebrate them as well. But I think we tend to sort of form in and out groups very quickly. And six sometimes do that as well. But we have this golden rule that um, despite our differences, you know, we're on the same journey. And uh, that's kind of the golden rule. And I, you know, that I, I grew up not in a very religious family, by the way. I did. My family had long hair and they followed certain precepts, uh, precepts in this religion and faith. And one of them is we keep long hair um, and keep their beards and long hair. Um, I have my butt on top of my head. Um, but. I think the key uh, challenge that you know humanity has is how do we look past what our eyes see? Because I, I, we look through our eyes, which is beautiful. The universe is a beautiful place, but we tend to put people in buckets. And I do want to you know mention something you said about the the tweet that you corrected people, which is the right thing to do. But I think I think it's important to also recognize that. You know, there's a lot of Muslim, majority of Muslims, overwhelming majority of Muslims are peace, peace loving Muslims as well. And I think we have to be, because I get that a lot. I'm like, Vishwajit, I'm sorry that, you know, you are mistaken for Muslim. I'm like, well, it's unfortunate, but let's also be mindful that let's not uh, stereotype the entire 1 billion plus uh, Muslims, uh, you know, on this planet. So it's, it takes a lot of self reflection um, on our part to make sure we are being good, good fellow citizens. Well, you know, just recently I was able to uh, interview an Afghan filmmaker and I just really just fell in love with the gentleman because he was so peaceful and it was completely opposite of what the media's narrative is. Now, for you, you're American born and you had uh, your family went back uh, to the homeland. And then when you turned 18, you came back to America um, but you found it was difficult to fit in. What happened? Yeah, I came back. I was, you know, I always knew I was going to come back, go to college in the U.S. And I come back first to the city of L.A. And just like we were talking about earlier, people looked at me, did not know me, did not bother to ask me who I am and judged me and called me all kinds of names, um, uh, offensive names, uh, laughed on my face. And I was a shy introverted 18 year old who is coming back to the US not having any family around me. So it was a very difficult time. You know, I, uh, I went into sort of what I call my identity crisis for the next few years trying to figure out, okay, how do I fit in? Who am I? Am I American? Am I not American? And um, it, it took a while for me to sort of find my place um, here at home in the US. Uh, through books, actually, interestingly, I uh, read just stories from the past, present, future, fiction, nonfiction, um, and just found um, 
a lot of connections to characters who exist, who do not exist, but it was, it was a very challenging time. I actually took off my turban, cut off my hair, tried to fit in, um, and realized eventually that, you know, I, you cannot respond to people's fears and anxieties and ignorance by changing yourself. You want to change because you feel, Hey, I want to be, I, I want to become better. I want to be a better human being. And that usually is not driven by somebody else's anxiety uh, and fear being projected upon you. Exactly. And, and Ryan, when I watched the short film and I believe it's around nine, 10 minutes long and, but it tells a very complete story. And how are you able to, as a director to incorporate the very essence of the bigotry, the racism that he endured uh, to really get that message across that we need to stop judging the book by its cover. Yeah, you make a good point. It's like I said before, it's 40 years and 10 minutes. A, a lot happens in the film because Vishuji has, has gone through a lot in his life. Um, at the beginning of the film, he faces intolerance in, uh, in India, where his parents are from. There's a sick genocide that happens in 1984. Um, and then he comes to the U.S. hoping to find the, the peace um, that he couldn't find in India. Uh, only to find that he doesn't fit in there either. Um, so as Mr. G mentions, he goes on an identity crisis, um, is having trouble fitting in until he finally realizes it's better to stand out as himself um, than stand out or than fit in as someone that he isn't. Um, so he finally grows his hair back out, puts his turban back on, moves to New York, and that happens right before 9-11. So the intolerance he faced when he first arrived in the U.S., if that was at a two or a three, it got turned up to 11 um, and he was just horrified to see what was happening on the news. Six being killed, uh, attacked all over the U.S. Um, and it's something that just kept continuing over the years. Was it and this is a question for both of you, because, you know, we all remember exactly for modern day, you know, 9-11 was kind of like JFK was for our our elders and our seniors in our country, they know what they were doing that day. But we all know what we were doing on 9-11. And uh, Vishajit, you know, when 9-11 happened, what was going through your mind when you were seeing all of these events unfold? You know, I, uh, as you said, um, I remember exactly where I was. I um, went to work and typically the first thing I used to do at work is I quickly check the news, saw this headline, very short story, uh, a plane uh, flies into World Trade Center Tower. And it just sounded like a very bizarre story. I mean, you know, we that that's just not something that's supposed to happen. And of, of course, in minutes, we were in a cafeteria, uh, television screens are on and we are seeing the towers come down. I actually had, you know, obviously, so we're all feeling vulnerable, uh, anxious. Um, all of these sort of feelings are uh, rushing through um, through Americans and even people abroad. And then I had somebody at work who did not know me. We did not work together. We were I worked in a very big company, uh, but he was giving me bloodshot eyes, anger filled looks like just and I'm just, and he doesn't know me, right? But he looked at my turban and beard and presumed I must be one of them. I must be the outsider, the enemy. And so I actually, you know, we, me and my brother used to work at the same company. We asked our boss, can we, and this was in, in um, we were working in the technology sector. We had the privilege of asking our boss, can we work from home? And he allowed us to work from home. So I worked from home for two weeks. And when I did step out, come back, coming back to work, it was almost near unanimous people flipping us off, calling me names, I go back home, Osama bin Laden, Taliban, terrorist. It was a very intense, uncomfortable moment for me. And I, you know, Ryan mentioned I've survived a genocidal massacre in India. You know, this kind of a similar scale, you know, different flavor, but, but the intensity of being seen as an outsider uh, and a target of hate and bias was so intense. Um, it, um, yeah, it was it, it was a very challenging time, and it had a huge impact on not only on six many other communities for months and years to come. Uh, just as an example, I'll share this with you. I live in New York City, uh, the biggest school district in the United States, the most diverse school district. Sick children in schools report getting bullied at twice the national average. We're talking about almost two third kids 
in New York City. Um, they're, they're harassed by their fellow students who do not know who they are, but at the same time, well, sometimes they know who they are, but uh, it's the societal stereotypes, cultural stereotypes that are so powerful that even you know kids who I love to work with, I do a lot of work with kids, they'll take out their um, frustrations and ignorance on fellow uh, sick students. But when you put on Captain America, their whole countenance and attitude changes instantly, doesn't it? It does. And, you know, it's this was a very sort of an accidental um, uh, occurrence. I did not plan on, uh, one, becoming a cartoonist after 9-11. That was kind of like my way of processing what was happening. And then eventually I created a cartoon in response to the first Marvel movie in 2011. I created a Captain America and a turban and beard, and somebody asked me to dress up as Captain America, and I said no. And it took that photographer a year almost to convince me to don that uniform as a social experiment. Let's let's have you don, walk the streets of New York. And when I did, and I was, I was nervous, I was actually fearful not knowing how people were going to respond to me, because I know what happens when I'm, I walk out, I used to walk out. Uh, there were always a few people, you know, who would tell me to go back home or call me all kinds of names. But when I wore this uniform, actually almost 10 years to the day, uh, in 2013, June, uh, it was like I had entered a parallel universe. I was um, followed by hundreds of people, photographed by people with or without my permission. I got hugged by strangers. That does not happen to me in outside of uniform. I got uh, photographed by police officers. I got pulled into a wedding. I got access to a fire department truck that was managing a parade. Uh, it, was, it was a very bizarre, amazing, uh, incredible day that I will never forget. And, you know, and Ryan, the way that you directed this short film and you bring up these elements, you know, especially when, you know, you, sh you show in the film, 9-11 happens and he's sitting in his cubicle and his coworker jeers at him and looks at him. And when I looked up at the screen and there's Osama bin Laden wearing uh, his head covering and I'm like, wow, instantly everybody judged everyone across the United States that wore a head covering and goes, you're evil. But then you put on a Captain America uniform and the same people are hugging you, cheering you on, wanting a picture with you. We got a problem here. You know, we're all Jekyll and Hyde, and that's that's a sad thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've it's um, yes, th that is true. You know, I've had a few people have said to me, "Look, I'm sorry that you have to do this, that you have to don this uniform to make this point." Um, we can certainly do better. You know, I I see it this way, and I. I don't know if ever, we're ever going to live in a perfect world where everybody's just going to treat each other with that utmost respect. It's a good goal to strive towards. I do. Um, I think it's the power of stories that really I get out of this, that we can, you know, you can use stories to do bad things. And we've, we've, humanity has many examples of that. But you can also take stories and sort of do good things with it to uh, change people's perceptions about Hey, you know what? We're um, we're we're we have a lot in common. So I use my Captain America persona, and a lot of the work that I do in schools and other uh, parts of the U.S. to um, highlight the fact that uh, beyond what meets the eye, we have a lot in common. Once you get to know each other's stories, you know you find we have there's just so much we have in common, and I think that's why I feel storytelling is critical, whatever be the medium, uh, filmmaking books, writing, poems, songs. Yeah, it's we, we need to make sure we create a space that we can share stories, especially of those communities like myself, uh, Six and many others whose stories are just not represented in predominant uh, American cultural media landscape or, um, you know, an entertainment landscape. Exactly. And Ryan, uh, you did a documentary on the sick genocide. How much did that project play into helping to create and magnify his story uh, through the American sick? Yeah, I think um, the, the sick genocide is something that's very important to six. 1984. The Indian government still um, has yet to recognize that it has happened. Um, and it's, it's a really uh, horrific thing that happens. Um, 
and it was important to include it to, in the film because um, just as you know, love is universal, hate is universal too. Um, and regardless of where you are in the world, um, representation and positive representation is way more important than, than people realize. Um, and that's what's really special about Vishwajit's work and Sick Captain America is for many Americans, um, they don't know who Sikhs are. And when they think of a turban and a beard, they think of something negative they've seen in the news or even something negative they've seen in film and TV. Um, and when they see Vishwaji dressed up as a superhero, for many Americans, it's the first time they've ever seen someone in a turban and a beard portrayed in a positive light, and uh, or even as a superhero. So it really kind of blows people's minds when, when they get to see Vishwaji. So it's uh, the perfect story to kind of educate people about who Sikhs are, what Sikhism is, um, in a way that's fun and compelling and colorful. And uh, I'm excited for more people to see the film soon. Well. I think Marvel needs to shake a few things up, and I would love to see uh, sick Captain America on the big screen uh, with the rest of all of Marvel's characters. I think it would be absolutely incredible, and I think it would send... Well, actually, your film is sending one of the most powerful messages of, of peace and to really open up our eyes to realize that we're all the same. And, uh, you know, we all come from different parts of the world, but we all have dreams. We all have purpose. We all have destinies before us. And, but I loved the film. And let me ask you this, uh, uh, Vizajit. Did you, were you the one that created the, the look of the anim animation? So I didn't create the look of the animation. I think this is where, um, uh, Ryan, I have to give him a lot of credit. I mean, we had a lot of conversations about this, that how much do we want this film to look like has a little bit of a comic touch from the 50s and 60s because the, the Captain America character that I had created uh, in 2012, 2013, that kind of inspired this whole Captain America journey of mine, that was kind of created sort of in the early 1940s, 50s Captain America comics. But we also knew we didn't want to really have that complete comic look so i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna let ryan talk about this because you know this, this is, these are early conversations we had how much you know we we want people yeah. to think about that a little bit from the 50s and 60s but we want people to be situated today in the in the modern age yeah so as as you mentioned before i've, I've gotten to do some, some films in the past about six and sick issues and because the issues are, are so heavy i struggled um to make a film that audiences would be excited to watch um, so from the beginning, Vishwaji and I knew that we wanted to do an animated short film, thinking that with animation, we might be able to um, talk about these issues in a way that's fun and colorful and interesting, um, that people would still be excited to watch. Uh, so for the first two years, it was just Vishwaji and I talking over the phone, planning the film, trying to figure out what the film would be. We went through 30 different edits of the film. The first cut was 30 minutes long, trying to cut down what's the story that's most compelling to tell Vishwaji's complete story. Um, then after two years of working, um, we brought on a storyboard artist and not long after that, an animation studio in Australia. Um, and between Vishwaji, myself, the storyboard artist and the animation team in Australia, we worked together to figure out what the colors would be. Um, and we ended up with something like Vishwaji says that's has a little bit of that comic book style, but not so much that it's distracting. Um, and it has that organic feel to it. Uh, there's like a paper texturing that's on top. So when you're watching it, it, it feels um, like something of this world. Um, and it still feels like, you know, it's a documentary story, which it is. And it is, and it's, what I loved about the animation is that, now, well, let me ask you this on the on the technical side of things. Was the animation created by through computer, or was it done as as I've talked to other animators, page by page being hand drawn? So somewhere in the middle. So it was done all digitally, but by hand digitally, if that makes sense. So there, there's definitely a ridiculous amount of work that went into making this film, and and luckily Vishwaji and I were able to raise enough money to hire quite a large team of animators to work over the course of six to eight months to put all the animation together. Um, so it's a, it's a big feat and, and Vishwajit and I are super excited by the way it turned out. 
Well, one of the things that impressed me about the artistic work of the animation and telling the story was the facial expressions of every character. And as, and especially Visajit, because, you know, you see, like, the worry in his eyes. You see the happiness for happy moments. You see when people are calling him names. The facial expressions in animation is so important. And this film delivers 110% on the mark in this area, which, of course, we know that those facial expressions bring forth real emotion for the viewer to be drawn in, engaging with the story, and at the same time learning that we need to be stop being bigots and stop being racist against things and people that we have not taken time to learn and to listen about them so we can, well, embrace, you know, all, you know, well, to embrace each other, to embrace all what the whole world is about. And this film, my God, I, I'm, I'm saying it right now. This is an award-winning animated film with probably one of the most powerful messages that we need to hear today. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I think a lot of credit to one of our storyboard artists, and then our animators who put in, as Ryan was saying, hundreds of hours of just making sure the story uh, is done justice by uh, the art that you know you get to see on the animation. So yeah, um, it, this has been an amazing teamwork. And as Ryan said, 30 cuts of the film, and we wanted to make sure every minute detail was uh, addressed. Well, it is. Now, for both of you, how does it feel to be selected to have a showing at the Tribeca Film Festival? It's a, it's a dream come true for us, of course, because Tribeca is such a prestigious festival and we've worked for so long uh, to make this film. It's, a, it's honestly a relief to get it into a, a festival as fabulous as Tribeca. Um, and also, it's kind of interesting just be given the historical context of the film and the festival. Um, the festival Tribeca um, started not long after 9-11 to try to revitalize that district um, in New York. And similarly, you know, our film um, was created in response and Vishwajit's work was created in response to 9-11 as well. So there's an interesting kind of melding of, of histories coming together at Tribeca. So we're thrilled to be a part of it. Well, yeah. um, what do you both, you know, what do both of you uh, would want the audience to take away from this film? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll let Ron respond as well. But I think, you know, we, I, to me, I want them to see uh, an American story here, an American story that uh, they'll connect to different parts of it. They don't have to, you know, we don't necessarily connect to every part of a story that we like, but, you know, there's certain parts that you connect and you have sort of a little emotional tug. And I think that's what my hope is. And I think people will, they'll, they'll find that, Hey, you know, this is an amazing story and there are different facets, but facets of that story that I, that I connect to. So I think that's my, my hope and wish is that people connect and say, this is a wonderful story, wonderful American story that happens to have a sick American as its main character. Amen to that. What about you, Ryan? There's a there's a lot that we cover in the film. There's a lot to learn uh, for people that have no idea what six sickism is or who six are. Uh, I'd love for them to learn about that. But uh, if if nothing else, I just want them to see Vishwajit as sick Captain America and just have that image come to mind next time they see someone with a turban and beard um, or anyone that looks a little bit different instead of thinking about something negative they've seen in the news or in a movie. I agree. Now, for both of you, what can we expect next from both of you? Oh, we've been talking about that uh, how more and more because we get that question a lot. I think, you know, we, in short, we want to we wanna create feature length films, animation films. Uh, we are open to also creating uh, shows for streaming platforms. So, yeah, we, we, we want to tell more um, amazing American stories that happen to have uh, sick leads and sick characters and even I mean other characters you know who are not who are underrepresented misrepresented in American stories I like Absolutely. that a lot and I I wouldn't mind actually seeing a, a full feature or maybe an animated series uh, where he's a true superhero 
saving the day. So ho hopefully that's on the horizon. We that's hope funny so, you mentioned yeah. that. That's that's exactly what we had in mind. Actually, was to do a narrative superhero feature with a with a sick lead character for sure. Yep. Well, you got a you got a fan right here, and <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, American Sick is not a cartoon, but it's a powerful animated short film about bigotry, prejudice, and intolerance. And violence is not and never the answer. In this case, a superhero emerges because we all love superheroes because they're good. And we should all take a bit of time to realize there is a bit of superhero in all of us. And we can all help each other at the same time. American Sick can be seen at the Tribeca Film Festival June 10th, June 11th, and June 17th. Now, if you can't attend in person, you can go to TribecaFilm.com and sign up and watch this amazing short film beginning June 19th through July 2nd. This is one film that needs to be shown in schools and colleges across the country as well as across the world. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program to share your great short film with us today. Thank you, thank for you having so much for having us. Well, That's ladies fun. and gentlemen, I want to thank you for watching the Ward Bond Show and catch the replay of our interview on our YouTube channel, Bond on Cinema. As for me, I'll see you next time.